Yeah, so my name is Ben Wilcox. I'm the director of farm operations here at Urban Roots. Um, I, I've always been interested in gardening. Uh, so every place that I lived in town, I would always have a garden uh, going when possible. Uh, when I lived in apartments, I would do little balcony gardens. Um, when I had access to a backyard, I would make raised beds. Um, so I did that privately for about a decade. And uh, I studied biology in school. Um, ever since Urban Roots was founded, I was always interested buying vegetables from here. Um, and uh, when the job became available as the farm team lead two and a bit years ago, um, I applied for that and got it. And I worked with the old manager for a couple months. And, uh, and then, then when the farm manager job became available, I was, I was here and that's my, my story getting to where we're at here today. Um, so Urban Roots as an organization uh, is focusing on using underutilized urban land to produce food and get it out in an equitable way into the, our community. Um, so we're at our Norland site here. We have three sites in the city with this being our biggest. Um, and we're located just near uh, Highbury and Hamilton at 21 Norland Avenue. Um, so I'm sure you can see the, the cars in the background at Highbury Avenue there. Um, so we, uh, we're a not-for-profit organization and we operate under a model of thirds. So we donate a minimum of a third of the produce that we grow. We sell a third of our produce at an affordable rate, which works out to be about half of market rate. And uh, we do that through our farm gate markets, which happen twice a week on site, um, Wednesdays from 4 to 8 p.m. and Sundays 10 to 1 a.m. or 10 to 1 p.m. And, uh, and then we also have several partnerships with uh, community resource centers here in town. So Crouch Resource Center, Glencairn Resource Center, Luso, and, uh, and a few others who also host markets. Some are weekly, some are a little bit more sporadic um, with the produce that we grow here. And that's all through the affordable rate too. So all of their markets are pay what you can. Um, and then we attempt to wholesale a third of our, our product as well. And that's to remain economically sustainable. So, so that's the model. Um, and then as far as production goes, we, uh, we garden at, in the market gardener style. So that's on 30 inch wide beds, planting as intensely as possible uh, with any given crop. All of our farm blocks here are uh, 50 feet by 50 feet and we have 15 of them. And then we have four protected structures that we grow uh, pretty intensely in, as you can see with our tomatoes here. Um, so we have about an acre of production space at this site. Uh, we have a site in the north end of the city uh, in partnership with Siloam United Church. And just for reference, there's six farm blocks there and they're 30 feet by 30 feet. So it is a smaller site. However, we are focusing a little bit more on fruit production there. So we're doing raspberries, strawberries, uh, plums, peaches, pears, um, and currants over there. So they're still establishing. They haven't really produced very much yet, but uh, yeah, it's a whole other skill set to for me to learn, um, which I'm I'm very much working on right now. We do want to grow as much food as possible, so that's why we are gardening in the market gardener style. Um, but the the goal is to get as much food into the community as possible um, and and really just provide some dignity through food for folks who are uh, food insecure and just uh, really do it in, in an equitable way. So everyone has access to uh, organically grown, um, nutrient dense produce. The founders of Urban Roots recognize that there is so much underutilized land um, and that food insecurity exists in London in a, in a big way as it does in, in other urban settings. So in response to bringing food in from elsewhere, uh, they really saw the need to reduce our carbon emissions um, by growing locally and uh, really trying to help solve the, the problem of food insecurity for folks in the London community. Um, so this piece of land uh, we started growing on in uh, 2016 and we started with one of those farm blocks that I was mentioning and uh, we just kept uh, expanding year after year as the food has been distributed uh, into the community and uh, the community has really come together 
around uh, the production of this food, um, by example of having all of our community resource center partners, um, which uh, started about two years ago. And uh, we started with just Crouch and Glen Karen, and, and now we have eight partners. So we had two the first year, four the second year, and now we have eight, eight partners. Um, so this, uh, the, uh, the distribution of this food is like really getting into all, all corners of the city now. I really learned everything that I know here uh, from the previous manager. Um, his name is Denis Hero. Um, and, uh, and so working with him and then just reading books about this. So it's, that's, I've really learned by doing it. Um, I didn't go to school for this type of agriculture and, uh, every, every season so far has been a big learning experience. Um, the season that I took over, I was really just trying to execute the plan that was given to me. Um, and then the next two seasons with this being the second, um, I've had control over that plan. So, um, did you repeat it or did so you freeze? last year we, we did, I, I made small tweaks, but largely repeated. Um, like I moved things around a little bit, but, uh, the, the growing techniques and things like that, I just kept to what I, I was taught this year. Uh, we've made some changes, um, mostly geared towards uh, some crops that weren't really producing, but also to really focus on soil health. Um, I've been learning a lot about that through the, the no-till movement and uh, so watching YouTubers like Jesse Frost uh, of the No-Till Market Garden podcast um, and, and reading authors and farmers like uh, Daniel Mays of Frith Farm in Maine. Um, they're both really big influences on, on how I'm trying to farm now. Um, the main tweaks that we've made regarding focusing on soil health is, uh, is really in conjunction with four big soil health tenants. So those are keep the soil planted, uh, reduce disturbance, increase diversity, and uh, keeping the soil covered. Um, so just to explain the importance of all of those and how we're, we're managing the farm, uh, in relation to those is, uh, the most important in my opinion, and by many of the people that I listen to's opinion, um, is to keep the soil planted. So your soil is, uh, an ecosystem unto itself, but it's not just like isolated. It's part of the above ground ecosystem as well. And plants play an incredibly integral role in that ecosystem. Um, so as plants are growing and photosynthesizing, they're synthesizing energy from the sun, uh, using the nutrients in the air and uh, in the soil. And they're not just providing energy for themselves. They're actually synthesizing what are called plant exudates. So those are all sorts of different uh, carbohydrate compounds that they then push out their roots into the soil. Um, and those plant exudates then feed all the bacteria and fungi in uh, the area around the roots, which is called the rhizosphere. Um, so in keeping your, uh, your soil planted, you're pushing a steady stream of those plant exudates into the soil, um, really increasing the richness and diversity and abundance of all of those soil microorganisms. And then they uh, facilitate the movement of nutrients in the soil. So you're cycling your nutrients. They're also feeding higher trophic levels of organisms like insects, uh, earthworms, uh, protozoa and things like that. Um, so in order to have life in your soil at all, plants are the number one thing that you need in your soil. So we are already planting very intensely during our main season in the field. Um, so we've been trying to uh, keep our bed flip. So when we harvest a crop, uh, we try to replant that bed within 24 hours. That's our goal. Um, we've been successful in some, some places and we've had to leave some for about a week um, at the most in other places. Um, but that's what we aim for is replanting within 24 hours of clearing a bed. Um, so what that looks like sometimes is we'll 
let a bed get quite weedy after we've uh, harvested our cash crop because we were not ready to, to flip that bed. But even the weeds are actually producing those plant exudates. And then we're also integrating uh, cover crops in a much bigger way this year. Um, so in my first year as manager, we were able to get all of our blocks either tarped or um, cover cropped in a winter kill mix or a, a rye. Um, last year, we were building these structures, uh, so I had to turn off my water. So I wasn't able to get good germination on any of our blocks, really. Um, so I cover cropped one block, and then I read a whole bunch about how keeping your soil uncovered and unplanted over the winter is terrible. So I just got to sit with that all, all winter. Um, this year, we have hard deadlines for all of our farm blocks. Uh, to get them cleared out and then sow the appropriate uh, cover crop based on what we're going to be planting next year. So if we're going to be getting into the beds really early in uh, sort of April, March, or uh, sort of early May, we'll be planting a winter kill cover crop that will die and then uh, produce a nice in situ mulch um, for those blocks. And then the blocks that we won't be planting until sort of later May uh, we're going to be doing a rye cover crop. For our solanaceous crops, so that's your nightshade family, your tomatoes, peppers, eggplants that don't go in until the end of May, um, we're going to be trying to just knock down that rye, tarping it to make sure that the rye is dead, and then instead of mowing it um, and tilling it, we're going to be trying to plant our solanaceae right through that knockdown down rye. Um, so it has, again, an in-situ thick mulch uh, to keep down weeds and everything like that. Getting back to the, to the soil tenants, um, we want to reduce disturbance. Um, and that's important because all of those soil microorganisms, um, they, they create the habitat that lets them thrive. Um, one way that they do that is they uh, secrete compounds that are sort of sticky that glue pieces of soil together to form soil aggregates. And the aggregate of those aggregates creates soil structure. Um, and that's both good for the plant um, in that it produces little air pockets. So there's lots of gas um, for the, the roots of our plants to use. Um, it also facilitates the movement of water and therefore the, the movement of nutrients and the physical locomotion of the actual microorganisms is uh, further enhanced by good soil structure. It alleviates compaction as well, which is a huge problem um, in agriculture at large. Um, so when you disturb the soil by tilling it aggressively, um, you smash all of those soil aggregates to pieces and your soil structure is destroyed. Um, so then it takes quite a long time for all of the soil microorganisms to then build that soil structure back up um, it also, it, it's destroying their habitat, so it's killing them as well. Um, it also kills, again, your higher trophic level um, organisms as well. Um, so we're really trying to reduce uh, how much we till. Um, most of our blocks we haven't tilled at all this year. Um, we've simply just been clearing them all. Uh, we use what's called a broad fork. So. I would still classify that as soil disturbance. However, it's it's not completely obliterating your soil structure. Um, it's a way to alleviate compaction without like flipping all the layers of your soil and just obliterating the, the structure. Um, so plant nutrition is actually like one of my weak points. That's what I'm gonna be doing a lot of reading about over this off season. Um, what we add to our soil is we do a lot of compost and then in the past we've done uh, chicken manure fertilizer. Um, it's a product called Actisol. Um, this year we've just been adding a little bit of feather meal and uh, for all of our transplants and our heavy feeders. What kind of water do you use here? It's city water. So we are looking into a filtration system to get all of the chlorine and the chlor uh, chloramines out um, because that is uh, in order for your biology to, to function well, the soil needs to be moist pretty much at all times. Um, and if you're pumping water into your soil that's full of chlorine, I mean, what's chlorine used for? It's for eliminating bacteria. Um, so it's not exactly great for 
Um, um, let me let me touch on the two last points of soil oh, health. Oh yes. Um, so the the third one is increasing diversity, um, and, and that's just important because each plant produces a different subset of all of the available plant exudates. So you're feeding different microorganisms, and uh, the more complex your your soil food web is, the more resilient it's going to be to any sort of stressors. Um, and more than likely, the more uh, fertility you're going to be able to produce um, with your the other pieces of that that puzzle. Um, and then there's also keeping the soil covered. Um, so erosion is a big factor in degrading your soil. And uh, when we're planting uh, agriculturally, we have to clear the soil to be able to plant uh, into that, that ground. Um, but then having mulches, uh, be that organic mulches or inorganic mulches, um, is very, very beneficial in the sense that it uh, retains moisture better. Um, if you're using an organic mulch, it decomposes over the season. It provides a little bit more food for your microorganisms and it, it reduces your, uh, your erosion. Uh, that's happening through through wind and water over the season. Um, it also mediates gas exchange uh, in the soil. Uh, so here uh, we we've traditionally grown all of our solanaceous crops and all of our field curcubits. So your summer squashes, your melons, your winter squashes through black ground cover plastic, um, which is very effective. Um, I am trying to get away from the use of plastic. So this year. We've ex been experimenting with different mulches, uh, one being a straw mulch. Um, so we planted all of our field curcubits through a straw mulch. Um, and that's an organic uh, straw, uh, sorry, mulch. And uh, that's great for feeding the soil. Um, however, as far as the experiment has played out, um, it's a light colored mulch. So it keeps the soil quite a bit cooler than a dark colored mulch would be. Um, and it's we haven't had to water those blocks even once we have been getting a decent amount of rain but even in the drier periods it was totally moist underneath uh the mulch and and frankly our our cucurbits have not been doing as well as they did last year as they did with the the black ground cover so we'll see if we do that again we might have to get a, a dark colored uh mulch also the weeds have just been growing right through it um, we planted our solanaceous crops in our newly established blocks. So I really wanted to make sure that, uh, we, we tamped down all the weeds this year. Um, so we did use our black ground cover there and, uh, it is, it's just nice to use. So we'll see how the, our, our experiments go on that. Um, but we are trying to incorporate mulches in our onion blocks, in our brassica blocks as well this year, which we haven't done in the past. Um, so that's how we're trying to keep the soil more covered. And uh, yeah, that rounds out the four. Yeah, so, so my name's Jen. I am the pack house and market manager here at Urban Roots. Um, my background's actually mostly in retail. I spend a lot of time working in retail spaces. I uh, went to school for marketing. So that's actually been super helpful here with the market and working with contractors with our new builds. So that's what I've been utilizing my past skill sets for. Uh, in the past, I actually worked with a lot of non-for-profits with a past company. Uh, and that's where I really gained the passion for really working with grassroots um, and non-for-profits in, in, in that area. Uh, and that's why I joined Urban Roots, the, the excitement of that. The idea of, of course, we have goals and of course we have set ideas of what we would like to do and see come through. But a lot of that comes from seeing the community grow and being able to support the community and farm cats. <laughs> this is Dime. He's our, he's our neighbor, but he takes care of all of the uh, rodents that we don't want around. Uh, knowing that our biggest goal is continuously building and supporting the community and 
being able to have beautiful soil that's regenerative and healthy and not contaminated and being able to produce food through that. And those are our, our, our broad big goals versus having big corporations uh, goals being large dollar amounts. So yeah, that's a huge piece of it for me for sure. Yeah. So obviously a lot growing and going on here. What we are trying to do though is really focus in on a few pillars. Some of those would be things like the healthy soil, like I mentioned, we want to make sure that we're leaving the world a better place than we found it. And that does include the health of the dirt and the soil. So not using a lot of chemicals, of course, but beyond that, making sure that we are being gentle and careful and, and regenerative. Uh, another part of it, of course, is building the community. A big piece of that stems from things like um, labor. So we have lots of uh, great volunteers that come out, but we also love uh, making sure our staff are fully able to learn and and give them what they need to be able to be fully invested in our gardens and our in our community farm here type idea. That does also mean we need volunteers, but we love to be able to structure that around. They give their time, but then they also get to learn, and we get to learn from them lots of times too from volunteers. So that's a huge piece of it. Uh, in this block here, we have lots of things like potatoes. Um, we have some new harvesting that we just recently have done for things like carrots. So it doesn't just start in the spring and, and in the summer, we try to keep going. I'm sure we've, you've talked a lot about that with Ben, but the goal is obviously fall harvest and hopefully in the future winter harvest so that we can continue being able to build and support the community and staff and, and have that labor and be able to give folks jobs that are so meaningful uh, and that can continue throughout the year versus just spring. But yeah. That is perfect. Can we go to do a little walk around next year? Please. Perfect. Okay. okay, right next to you. Okay. <laughs> Super close. Yes. So lots of changes happening at Urban Roots. Um, good thing. So this spot here will be very different soon with our new pack house coming in. That's a big part of my job. But right now we are still fully utilizing it for things like garlic and drying it. This is split up between things like seed garlic, but also garlic for folks to eat for our community markets, for our farm gate markets, all of that good stuff. And then we have our high tunnels. These are, of course, staying. So these were erected and are going to be utilized for keeping lots of produce growing all year round. Lots of good eggplants in this guy. We also have some fun cucumbers growing. These are also great because we can temperature control them. So we can make sure that if it's a very hot day, we can open it all up and it's automated, but it also means that on a really cold day, we don't have to panic and hope we're gonna produce. The produce is nice, fresh and safe in here. So how long do you have these greenhouses going around here? So these were erected actually fairly recently. We haven't had them too long. They were um, erected just before I started here. So it would have been earlier this year, um, but we've only just recently started utilizing them. A big part of my job was also getting the infrastructure in place for hydro and water. And we needed all of those for this to work correctly uh, without hydro. They're just really pretty tense. <laughs> so, but now the fans are working, um, the rooftops can open up and that's all due to the hydro that we've uh, been able to establish here now, which is great. Again, there's a lot of baby steps, uh, which is really big and not for profits and working with grants, but these little steps are the reason why we can continue to support the community um, in so many more ways than just being able to give them summer produce. We're going to be able to extend that further and longer and be able to continue doing the good things that we want to do within the city. Yes. So utilizing as much of the land always is what we're trying to do here with Urban Roots. We want to make sure that's actually one of our pillars is utilizing underutilized land within the city. But even in this space, whatever we can do to support the community further with fresh delicious food for good pricing is, is our goal. So being able to do that. The only other thing that's here would be our composting, which we do have the community compost for folks to drop off com compost anytime they want. So yeah, we have a lot of positive feedback from 
um, folks around London and London area that are so excited about things even as simple as composting. But it's something that is important to to not have such detrimental impacts on the planet. And if it's such a small thing that we can do, we want to continue to do that as long as, as we can. Um, and that's, again, yeah, a big piece of it. We also, we do have a fantastic community within London um, and the outskirts of London. We have people come every Wednesdays and Sundays for markets. We also have new faces all the time. Yeah, folks who are biking to Wortley Village who use the awesome trails and by the river, they are they just see us and they're like, what is this? And it, and it warms my heart uh, when I get to do that all the time to to tell them what we're doing and how they can also help and, and support. So I love it. And a lot of people don't know their food, right? And I, I can say that for myself too, really. It, truly, I didn't know my food until you put your hands in the soil, you get to learn the different things, what works, what doesn't work. And a lot of folks are disconnected from that because we just go to the grocery store and get whatever we want, whenever we want. So here we don't have to do that as much. Here we get to actually see it come to fruition, understand and know and learn about our food from, again, the importance of the soil, the importance of the people working here to also being able to have that ability to give your family yourself your community fresh the best fresh local food uh, is so important so i never get bored of showing people and telling people about urban roots because i think as a core for humans it's it's important to know the air we're breathing the water we're drinking the food we're eating is good for you and and not depleting the planet of more than we need to so yeah, I love it here because we want to do that. And yeah, that's uh, a huge piece to it. And, and you can even see that when it comes to folks coming to our community markets um, or um, our farm gate markets, these, pe these people are excited, right? Like it's such a, a, a connection for everyone is food, right? We all need it, but it doesn't matter how old, how young your background and none of that matters. What matters is we're all just excited about good fresh food and, and people want to learn and know, including the staff. Absolutely. You know, like today we were harvesting carrots and everyone was excited to take the little baby ones and have our breakfast as <gasps> <No>. carrots. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful story that you yeah. have here. Time. Everyone is welcome always. We love showing it all off and learning from others and having others come and learn. And yeah, we appreciate you coming. Thank you very much. Have a good one. You too. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Conservation Authority. I'm the Community Outreach Technician and that means I do a lot of this, chatting about all things nature and conservation with kids, adults, teachers, everyone. I love to knowledge share and that's just what I'm going to do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. Join us September 30th for the Yes I Can Gathering for Girls at Matthews Hall a safe place for girls 12 to 14 to work through the tough stuff they face every day. Go to www.waymakerinc.ca for more information and to register. Hey, man. Want to go for a ride? Sure. Toss me a life jacket. Ah. Ugh.